Hi, everyone. I'm Jing Yigao from Princeton University. Today, I'm glad to share with you our work, SYNCSE, Simple Contrastive Learning of Sentence Embeddings. This is a joint work with Xingchen from Tsinghua University and Dancy from Princeton. Before we dive into SYNCSE, let me give you some background here. The problem we're trying to tackle, sentence embeddings, have wide applications like zero shell retrieval and sentence clustering. For example, so we have this database of sentences from all NLP papers, and we want to find the sentence from the database that has the closest semantic meaning to the query, which language models are great. If we have good sentence embeddings, we can retrieve this sentence, where it obtains new SOTA results on 11 NLP tasks from the BERT paper. There are already tens of works about sentence embeddings. Some adopt the simple unsupervised signal of using current sentence to predict the next and assumes this learns good sentence embeddings. We've also seen work utilizing existing supervised data sets. For example, in natural language inference or data datasets, we have sentence pairs and labels of whether they have an internal relation. Those works encode NR pairs into sentence embeddings and then combine them and train classifier to predict the relation. This so far produces the strongest sentence embeddings. There's also a new line of unsupervised methods where they take augmented views of the same sentence. For example, here from the sentence, but from Sesame Street is so cute. They do the temptation of random deleting some words and resulting in bird is cute and bird from Sesame cute. Then they encode them into sentence embeddings and maximize their agreement. This delivers decent results, but not as good as the supervised models. Now comes the exciting part. In this work, we propose SIMCSE, which shows pre-trained embeddings plus simple contrastive learning into state-of-the-art sentence embeddings. The most surprising finding is that with only unsupervised data and standard dropout as data augmentation, we can achieve comparable results to previous supervised state-of-the-art. And we show that incorporating the entailment and contradiction pairs from NLI datasets can further push, push the result. We also gave empirical and theoretical analysis about why SIMCSE works. We showed that the contrasted objective makes pre-trained embeddings more uniform and aligns positive pairs better when supervised signals are available. First, what is contrastive learning? The general idea is very simple. To learn good representation, we want to pull those semantically close neighbors together and push apart those non-neighbors. For example, say we want to learn good representation for Sesame Street characters, we would want bird image to be close to this twisted bird and to be far away from Alma. In the computer vision field, a paper called SIM CLR, or Simple Framework for Contrast Learning of Visual Representation, showed that contrast learning can learn good representation, even comparable to supervised counterpart, which is also a great motivation to our work. So to be more specific, how do we do this contrast learning? Here comes the info NCE objective, which has been widely adopted and looks very similar to a softmax function. Notation explained, same here is the similarity function, usually cosine similarity. H is the sentence embedding and tall is the temperature, a hyperparameter. Here we have two critical design choices. In the numerator, the positive pairs, those you want to pull together, and in the denominator, the negative pairs, those you want to push apart. So what should positive and negative pairs be? Recall the example I showed in previous slides. Some previous work uses data mutation to construct positive pairs, like randomly deleting some words from the input sequence. And one way to you know, unsupervised synthesis E is that the positive pairs are simply the representations of the same sentence itself, but with different dropout masks. Note that the dropout here is simply the standard dropout built in transformers, including the hidden state dropout and attention dropout. And for the negative pairs, we take all the other sentences from the same mini batch, it has in batch negatives. Let me give you a concrete example. This is our model. For the positive pairs, we take one sentence, encode it, and then we encode the very same sentence again. Because of the standard dropout, we get two different embeddings. And for the negative pairs, we simply take all the other sentences in the mini batch, and this is called in batch negatives. If we look at the info NCE loss objective here, we have the similarity between representations of the same sentence with different dropout as numerator and in batch negatives in the denominator. 
We'll show later that how the simple heuristics of positive pairs can even be previous supervised SOTA. We also find out that incorporating some human annotated data sets like NLI as the findings from previous work can further boost the results. NLI data sets are constructed in the following way. Given a premise, for example, there are two dogs running, annotators are required to write hypotheses that is always true or entailment, like there are animals outdoors, and that is always false or contradiction, like the pets are sitting on the couch. And that is probably true or neutral, like the dogs are ca catching a ball. We realize that the entailment pairs, since they share similar semantics, can serve as good positive pairs. And the contradiction pairs, which are really similar but have contradictory semantics, are perfect hard negatives. And here comes of supervised CMCSE. We encode the premise on the left and also the corresponding internal hypothesis on the right and take their cosine similarity for the positive pair. Then we have the hard negative, the corresponding contradiction hypothesis. And also as in the unsupervised case, we have in batch negatives, which are all the other hypotheses from the batch. Taking a look at the influence CE objective, we have similarity of premises and entailment hypothesis in the numerator and hard and in batch negatives in the denominator. Now let's talk about evaluation results. We usually take the fixed embeddings and we have the intrinsic evaluation of using the semantic textual similarity tasks or STS. We are given a sentence pair. We calculate the cosine similarity of their embedding, compare it to human annotated similarity scores and report Spearman's correlation. Extrinsic evaluation and transfer tasks are also commonly used. For example, given a cinnamon classification dataset, we take the fixed embeddings to train a linear classifier and see how well it performs. Here, we mainly take the STS tasks for this is closer to what we do in applications. So how does CMCSE perform quite well? Here we show the STS results of several unsupervised baselines, including bird base average embedding, bird base flow, and ice bird base. And here comes unsupervised CMCSE. We can see that on average, unsupervised CMCSE is almost 10% higher than previous unsupervised SOTA and 20% higher than average bird embeddings. And if we compare the unsupervised CMCSE to previous supervised state of the art, namely sentence bird, you can see on average unsupervised CMCSE, the blue bar can even outperform sentence bird, the green bar. And our supervised CMCSE, the red bar, achieves 6.7% higher spans correlation on average compared to sentence bird. We have more results in the paper. Check it out. Now we dig into why our CMCSE works so well. We want to compare unsupervised CMCSE ways of constructing positive pairs to other methods explored in previous work. So CMCSE simply takes the same sentence as positive pairs with different dropout. Other heuristics of positive pairs including, include using next sentence as positive pairs, randomly replacing a word with a synonym, randomly cropping, and random deleting one word from the sentence. We apply all those positive pairs in the contrasted learning framework. And all the results here are based on one main random sample Wikipedia synthesis and we report on STSV dataset. We can see that simply using standard dropout perform much better than either next sentence prediction or any discrete computation in the text input. How can simple dropout act as positive pairs? We further borrow the alignment uniformity tool from one et al. We use alignment, which represents how well positive pairs align on the reputation hypersphere, and the uniformity, which indicates how well embeddings are uniformly distributed to describe how good our reputation is. And this is also related to the sentence embeddings produced by portrayal language models. Research shows that they well encode the sentence semantics, or in other words, they have good alignment and similar sentences have similar representation. But they are also highly anisotropic, or in other words, the embeddings distribute in a narrow cone and are very poor in uniformity, which is very undesirable for representation because then it's hard to distinguish different sentences. There are post-processing methods trying to mitigate this problem by mapping the embeddings to more uniform space, but they do not work as well as CMCSE. Back to unsupervised CMCSE, we add two interesting variants for helping understanding. 
One expects 10%, which keeps the standard 10% dropout, but takes the same dropout mass for the parcel pair. The other is no dropout. In both cases, the embeddings for the parcel pairs would be exactly the same. On the right, we plot how uniformity and alignment change with the first few training steps. Both metrics are the lower the better. We see the blue and yellow dots, which are the two variants, suffer from a collapse on alignment. And the green dots, which is ANSI4S MCSE, can improve the uniformity while keeping a steady alignment thanks to the dropout masks. We also wonder for the supervised MCSE, are NOI datasets the best choice? Here we show the comparison of using NOI entailment pairs to using QQP, Flickr 30K, and ParaNMT. We see that NOI wins by a large margin. And after using the contradiction pairs as hard actives, we can further boost the result. We assume the reason for NOI to win is that NOI datasets have high annotation quality and also the premises and hypothesis have a similar, lex smaller lexical overlap. So the task is more challenging. In the end, we apply the same alignment uniformity tool to all the models. We see that average bird embedding, though good at alignment, has a poor uniformity. Then we have those post-processing methods. They recognize the embeddings to be very uniform, but suffer a drop in alignment. And finally, it comes our SIMCSC models, which enjoys both good alignment and uniformity. And we also have more theoretical analysis in the paper. To conclude, in this paper, we propose SIMCSC E still of the R synthesis embeddings with contrastive learning. Our unsupervised model simply takes standard dropout as part of the pairs, and our supervised model further uses the internal contradiction pairs from LR datasets. We also dig into the question of why. We use the tool of alignment and uniformity for empirical analysis and also give some theoretical explanation of why contrastive objective works. And that's all. Thanks.